Hello and welcome back to my channel TFF Teacher from Finland. In this video I will be talking about ethics and society. In academic philosophy ethics is considered part of practical philosophy along with social and political philosophy and aesthetics. These branches of philosophy are called practical because they are about practice, something actually done in life. In contrast, branches like epistemology and metaphysics are considered theoretical philosophy because they are about theoretical matters. Of course, this is an analytic distinction and the branches actually do intertwine a bit. There is such a thing as ethics of belief, for example, which binds ethics and epistemology very strongly together. That is just an example and probably goes beyond the goals of this course. The fact that social philosophy and political philosophy are part of the same branch as ethics indicates their closeness. This may seem obvious as a proper conduct and how society is or should be organized can seem intuitively very closely related matters. After all, would there be any ethics if people did not form communities of some kind? When we talk about problematic issues in society, we are often talking about social justice or fairness or welfare. These words quite clearly have to do with values and morals and so belong in the purview of philosophical ethics. The morality of a society or community is influenced by many cultural things like religion and even science. For example, the development of modern medicine has enabled things like plastic surgery, contraception, in vitro fertilization, fetal screening and even cloning which may have changed moral opinions in society. They have also caused a debate about moral issues. Mass media and later social media have also changed morality by publicizing issues and ideas that would otherwise have remained unknown. Unfortunately, they have very much promoted consumerism and other ethically questionable behaviors. Cultures have typically had taboos making even talking about some things unacceptable, but modern media in at least so-called Western societies have pretty much broken such taboos, as far as I can tell. That does not make all kinds of behavior acceptable, but now we can at least discuss all kinds of behavior pretty openly. One way in which morals are connected to society is that moral views are used to justify laws. For example, murder and theft are penalized in law as crimes requiring punishment, and this is justified by appealing to common morality, according to which murder and theft are wrong. But it goes the other way as well. Laws also influence the moral views of the people, so that illegally copying music, movies or computer games may be considered morally wrong, not just criminal. But that was not the case before the copyright laws existed. There are different kinds of norms with different kinds of sanctions for breaking them. Breaking legal norms will result in legal sanctions, such as fines or imprisonment. Breaking moral norms that are not also legal norms may be frowned upon, so how morally you behave may be reflected in your social standing. A known liar will not be trusted or liked, for example, while everyone will praise a helpful person or a philanthropist. Despite the connection between morals and law, most people do recognize the difference, understanding that law, for example, is not always just. Besides sometimes disagreeing with our sense of justice, the law can also disagree with our moral views. It is also obvious 
that it would not even make sense for the law to deal with minor moral issues, which still may be important to us on a personal level. For example, lying or betraying the trust of a friend are not typically matters for a court of law, yet we can recognize those actions as immoral. So, if morals are different from law, then ethics must be even more clearly so, because philosophical ethics is more detached from the issues and practice, and rather more abstract and critical thinking about moral views, their justifications, and even their nature. General social rules of behavior are called norms, and a philosopher may prescribe them for society in an attempt to improve said society. This is closely connected to social philosophy, but the difference is that in normative ethics the norms are intended for individuals themselves to apply in their own lives, while social and political philosophy are interested in figuring out how whole societies should function, and what makes a good society how a state or the economic system should be organized, for example. Social and political philosophy analyze the good society and seek ways to improve it. This already requires, in my view at least, some moral views. This means ethics is intimately connected to views about society. But for the purposes of this course, the focus here is mostly on the choices of the individual and the general theories of ethics. What direction will society take? Or your reference group, the group of which you consider yourself to be a member. It is partially up to you and your duty to influence it. Peer pressure is just another false authority and you cannot justify your behavior by appealing to it. You cannot justify being a member of a group of people who, for example, bully others. It is your duty to do your best to ensure that the group does nothing evil like that. The same with the larger society. You cannot just stand by and watch your nation fall into fascism. You have to try and stop that from happening exactly what you can and should do about it are discussed in political philosophy, but the fact that you have the duty to act comes from personal ethics. See you in the next video. Bye for now! If you wish to support my channel, please click thumbs up, subscribe and share my videos. Any comments on the videos would also be welcome.